Yeah. I love that bluesy entrance. Um, <clears throat> hey, thank you all for joining me um, this last second. Um, you know, I got a request to do a sketchbook, and I had it planned to do tonight, and I thought, you know what? Let's just do it live. And so here I am. And I appreciate all of you jumping in with no notice to join me, Aaron Solo Lopresti, on another episode of Aaron Live. So let's see if anyone's actually here, because, you know, you make these last second announcements, you never know. Well, Leg Kick is here. Uh, Josh Olive is here. And uh, we've got a few more people watching that haven't actually chimed in, and that's fine. You don't have to comment. You can just enjoy the wonderfulness of the show. All right. So, uh, so what are we doing? Well, we're going to draw in a sketchbook, and some of you may be going, sketchbook? What, what, what are you talking about? I'm talking about this. This. Yeah, I think I'll I think I'll move over here. There, 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 there I am. Uh, this is my uh, hardcover sketchbook. It is sixty-four pages of full color amazement. It's called Raw Imagination. It is twenty years of sketches from two thousand to two thousand nineteen. And if you count every year, including two thousand, that is twenty years, not nineteen years. And of course, it's by me. And that the proof of that is the fact that my name is on the book. So. I have one of those tonight. I'm going to draw on the inside. Now, you're saying, Aaron, that's so awesome. I've been watching you all this time, and I didn't know about this. Well, so you're saying, how, how, how can I order one? Well, read the scroll at the bottom there, and it'll answer all your questions. Uh, the, book, the book comes signed and numbered, limited edition, 750 copies. You can get one for 25 bucks. It's just signed and numbered, and that's totally fine, plus $5 shipping, of course. Or you can request a head sketch on the inside for an extra 20 bucks, which is a steal, and um, for 45 bucks and then $5 shipping, so $50 total. And that's what I'll be drawing in tonight. <clears throat> so I'll let that scroll run for a little bit. Um, I'll get rid of that. <clears throat> Where's my Garbage Man banner back there? That's just terrible. You can tell this is last second because I uh, had my Garbage Man pulled out. There we go. Okay. There we go. That's much better. <sighs> yeah. Now you don't have to look at my messy studio behind me. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I'll tell you, though, I'm going to have to start putting restrictions on these requests because I've been getting a lot of uh, likenesses, which are hard enough to do, but do them in these sketchbooks, it makes it even harder. But I'm gonna, I took this one because usually, well, usually when I get, you know, like, can you do an actor or something? It's usually like from a monster movie or something like that. So it's kind of fun. Um, this is Mar Marilyn Monroe and it's like, I'm gonna pass that up. So, um, but I think I am gonna put a little bit of restrictions. Like, you know, if you start asking me, hey, we draw my, you know, we draw me or draw my neighbor or something, likenesses take, like twice as long as just doing a superhero would. So um, I'll have to be a little bit more selective in the future. But I do, like I said, I, I did want to kind of take on the challenge of Marilyn Monroe. So we're going to tackle that in just a moment here. Uh, that, um, is anybody else? Uh, there's Stephen Ng is here. Um, hmm. <laughs> uh, Josh, see, I've covered him up now, but... Josh liked Batman lurking in the background there, supervising everything. That was a, a Batman bust that I got from the Warner Brothers store. If you remember the old Warner Brothers store before they closed them down like 15 years ago or whatever, they used to have some really cool stuff in there. And that was almost, that was like 40 bucks, I think. Well, maybe it was 60. I don't know, but it wasn't bad. No, I think it was 40 bucks I paid for that. And that's, come on, that's pretty awesome for that. Um, da -da. Yeah, drawing my neighbor as a superhero. Yeah, no. Okay, so let me uh, get this camera off of me because who really needs to see too much of me? I know I don't, and I can see myself in the camera, and I know you guys can see me, and that's just you know, it's just way too much exposure. Okay, so I got to switch cameras. 
I can remember where the button is. There it is. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got here. You can see I've got a messy desk, but you know what they say, the sign of a genius, right? So let me adjust this camera as I want to do every freaking episode. Because <clears throat> it's never, no matter where I have it, it's never quite right. Okay, let's zoom in here. Okay. This seems, there we go, this seems reasonable. All right, so I got a pencil. I got to bring up my um, Maryland reference because I'm not going to show you guys, but I need to see it. And let the festivities begin. Drawing Maryland, that drawing Maryland Monroe on your lap is not an easy thing. Although it worked out okay for John F. Kennedy, although Marilyn Monroe was in his lap, but I don't think he was drawing her. Anyway, uh, there used to be like this old uh, rumor about, I don't know, rumor is the right word, maybe old wives' tale about Marilyn Monroe and um, um, Einstein, Albert Einstein. I think they even did a movie where it was a scene in a movie or something, but I, I, I find it hard to believe that to be true, but one never knows. About Hollywood, do they? Not that Einstein was in Hollywood, but you know. I do like drawing celebrity likenesses, though. It's it's a nice it's nice to practice, and when you have someone that has an iconic look, like Marilyn does, in some ways it's it's easier. You have a little more leeway to screw it up because everybody's going to know who it is unless you just totally tank it, which hopefully I won't do. I did a, um, as I recall anyway, if memory serves, I did a, a tremendous drawing of Marilyn Monroe on notebook paper in high school in one of my, um, it was like a English class or something. <clears throat> I was supposed to be taking notes. I think I was trying to impress a girl that was sitting next to me. Um, but I think I still have it in this really nice sort of, Marilyn Monroe that I did. It's a notebook paper surrounded by notes, right, from class. And it's kind of right in the middle of it. Is uh, one of those. So even back in the day, I also did a Brando as the Godfather in high school that turned out pretty well. But likenesses are a little bit easier when you've got a lot of time to work on. I don't know. This is either uh, Marilyn Monroe or Belinda Carlisle. We'll see. Oh, look. and get this so that maybe there you can see that a little bit better the lighting's a little bit better but of course it's not the best position for my hand to be in but hey this is all about you guys not about my comfort level okay kind of 
looks like Kid Carter. <laughs> uh, what a strange coincidence. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Let's see. Ken Carson's here. This is who this is for is Ken. So let's see how it uh, all turns out. Uh, let's see. Some like it hot. Draw my neighbor. Uh, right handed drawing comics. Right, right handed drawing commence. That's right, man. I'm not, I well, knock on wood. Hopefully, I'm never going back to drawing left handed again. Uh, Kristen Grant wants to know how, how's the shoulder doing? Kristen is doing well. I'm nine weeks out of surgery and back to drawing. Still a long way from being 100%. I can't like lift anything over my head or anything like that. And I can only use it in certain positions and for certain things, but it is getting better. I just went from seeing the physical therapist two times a week to one. So I kind of felt that was a kind of a nice little graduation. Okay. I wonder how come it's only like the Hollywood stars that die young that we have such reverence for. I wonder if it's because they don't have a large enough body of work for us to go, hey, wait a minute, this person really isn't that talented. So they die young right when we think they're awesome. And we never learn otherwise. I was never a big Marilyn Monroe fan as an actress or I guess she was more of a movie star than she was an actress, but um, but I kind of get her appeal, obviously. It's an amazing thing how. Um, one little thing like you know the shape of the head or um you know being off a little bit on the nose or something can change the entire look of a character or a uh, when you're doing a you know a likeness or portrait i guess we we wanted to get official here with our language. Okay. No. It's hard to be quite as talkative when I'm doing one of these because I, I have to focus a little bit more on what I'm doing as opposed to just kind of You know, if I'm drawing just a superhero out of my head or something, it's doesn't quite quite require the um, same amount of focus as trying to do a likeness does. Kind of looks like Scarlett Johansson a little bit too. Hmm. Funny how many actresses over the time have you know been able to kind of make up, be made up to kind of look like Mar Marilyn Monroe and actually pull it off pretty well, because that says a lot about that she has a very um, iconic look. That you know, there's 
tons of aspects that go into it, her hair and her, you know, the half closed eyes all the time. And you can see what I'm, I'm getting there. Not quite there, but I'm getting there. This will all become clear when I start inking it. Got to get these eyes right, though. Again, you have to cut me a little bit of slack because this is, uh, you know, a sketch in a sketchbook. So, let me see. I don't know, her nose might be a hair short. I don't know if I want to go in and bring it down now. I think I got too much distance between her bottom of her nose and her lips here. I'm going to raise those up a little bit. Oh, Shelly. <laughs> uh, Shelly's in the other room. Well, she could be in here entertaining you guys. She's uh, she's in the other room. Yep, it's all alone, solo, all alone. That's what it means. Tell you return to the show, Shelly. It's Aaron Sh Solo Lopresti. So no slacking. All right, I'm trying not to. You can see it's coming together there. Trying to get this so that you guys can see it better. All right, I got too much thick lip here. I gotta give her. There we go, that's better. It's not too shabby, all things considered. I want to get this hair right. I think her hair is, man, almost as important as every other part in her look. You know, it's, or is, let me try that again. It says, as important as any other part of her look as her, as her do. I think you can kind of sort of sell the look. If you can get the hair right, you can sell the look. 
and say, well, well, clearly that's Marilyn Monroe. You can just tell by the hair. And that way, if I screw up the face, you don't really notice it because the hair is right. Although I'm not 100% sure that I'm doing the hair right either. Let's see. That needs to come in a little bit. I wonder how much damage she did to her hair, like coloring it as platinum blonde all the time. I guess that's a question for like Revlon or somebody to answer for us. Although it's probably not any more damaging than coloring it any other color. So. I told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again because I think it's particularly apropos to what I'm doing right here. So, <clears throat> comic book artist Rick Magyar told me this story. I crossed Jen when he was a kid, teenager. He went to a show, presumably in New York, where Barry Smith was appearing. This would have been in the 70s, kind of during Barry Smith's heyday on you know Conan and whatever else he was working on. And um, so he, uh, he, uh, I guess Barry was sort of talking to whoever was sitting next to him, which, you know, might've been rights and who knows. And uh, he was doing sketches and stuff. So there we go. There's Marilyn, not looking too shabby. Um, so, he says, yeah, kid, what do you want? And Rick goes, oh, Conan, please. And so he starts drawing this headshot of Conan, and he's working on it. And then he just goes, he stops for a second, and he goes, hey, how much money do you have? And Rick goes, 20 bucks. And Barry Smith goes, okay, it's finished. <laughs> and gave him this half-drawn headshot. So you're getting a lot more for 20 bucks than you would have got from uh, Barry Smith, even in the 70s. So, you know, taking into consideration inflation and everything, uh, but I also have to admit, doing these gives me content for my uh, shows, which is actually sort of important too. So. Although until I get monetized, you don't get any money. No, I'll stop whining about money. We all need money, right? Hey, look at that. It's not bad. She might have a, still might have a little bit too much chin. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, let's see. Did you get Barry Windsor Smith's monsters? I have not. I I did see some guy. Um. No, I haven't yet. I. Some guy um was talking about it. I was interviewing him. Excuse me. Some guy that um on YouTube has a does. He's a retailer, I think, and he sells mostly graphic novels or whatever. So he was kind of pumping Barry Smith's monsters, and he had Barry Smith actually on to do an interview, which was really cool. So I listened to most of it. And it was like, apparently he was, you know, been working on this for like 30 years or something on and off with different, uh, um, you know, like one of them was originally a Hulk story that he couldn't get. Jim Shooter to pay him to finish or something. So we went and changed it to fit into this. And and so it ends up being this, you know, 367 page extravaganza. <sighs> but I'm still not 100% clear on exactly what it is. But I'm in, I am intrigued. I'm going to have to go check it out. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. She did read Atari Force and then got sick so and couldn't join us. So, um, yeah, Shelly's actually, she is holding out for, put that up there. Shelly's holding out for a better contract, which um, 
I'm going to give her a 30% increase. And let's see, that's 30% of zero. And Shelly's a mathematician is still zero, I think. Oh. Uh, maybe Aaron could draw a blueberry pie. I could. I would rather eat a blueberry pie. But um, anyway, all right. So now let's go to stage two of this, which is um, inking for fun and profit. This I can do a little bit more mind-numbingly in my approach, I think. Did um, well. I'm not gonna say I did a series of, but I did a few drawings that I posted a while back from my sketchbook of um, Charlie Chaplin was one, and um, Henry Hole and Werewolf of London was another one. Um, so I do likenesses for practice. Um, every once in a while the thing is it's it's a completely different discipline um drawing from just your imagination as opposed to drawing what you see and it's you get so used to you know like i'm doing for comics just you know drawing out of my head as opposed to looking at reference for everything. And that includes facial anatomy and everything else. And you, it's hard to keep yourself from, you know, drawing just what's in your head as opposed to drawing what you're seeing, you know, and actually really interpreting the line that you're seeing. Um, well, anytime you look at a photograph, you're looking at really shades of gray. Um, and to convert those into lines into your head and bring them out on paper it's it's a challenging thing i mean it, it it gets easier the more you do it but it's you know it's like anything else you got to practice it and i just don't do that much of this type of thing um, um i'm sure i got distracted reading messages <laughs> What was I saying? Um, oh, it's just it's just a different discipline, and so it kind of gets your. It's like if I started doing, you know, Disney characters or Warner Brother characters. That's a style, right? That you have to sort of get into that mode. Whereas, um, you know, again, when you're drawing from your head and what what I've been doing for thirty years in comics, that's a little bit more, you know. Your style is sort of ingrained into what you normally would do and draw and so it's easier to do that as opposed to something like this where you're kind of changing your approach uh, let's see this is an important thing yes like and subscribe it's free and you might get to watch Aaron get canceled live that has happened so don't be you know don't be left out in the cold when opportunities like that you know they they present themselves you never know when I'm going to get shut down by YouTube. See, if all I have to do is say something like voter fraud, oh, and I could get canceled. They're probably canceling my show right now. If I go black, I apologize. <laughs> what, else, what other trigger words can I say that'll get me canceled? Um, well, I was going to go over here and, and do something, but what was it? Oh, I know that I, I've got to run a little, um, little, little advertising real quick here. And this is Shelly when I told her she wasn't going to get a raise. So I got to use my stuff. I got it all up here and, um, you know.
Uh, you guys are you guys are counting me down to see when uh, when I'm going to get canceled for what I just said. So um, maybe you can say stuff, but if it's out of context, they won't shut you down. I don't know. <clears throat> I really don't know how it works. I'm the most uncontroversial person. Well, in person, I'm very controversial because I usually speak my mind. But on shows like this, I feel, you know, it's just about the art. Let's just keep it about the art. Not to stir up any trouble. Just keep it about the art. See, if none of us knew anything about the other people, you know, we'd all be friends, right? So if we just talk about art, there's no reason not to like one another. That's my kumbaya moment. All right, I gotta say, this is this is pretty darn good for being in a sketchbook. So, drawing on my lap without folding the page completely over to bend it. I mean, there's, I'm working under a lot of restrictions and, and really, quite frankly, art oppression right now. And um, so I just want you guys to really appreciate um, what I got going on here. I cited kind of at the last minute, obviously this is a last second show, um, to do this. And so I had to kind of like um, whip up something pretty quick for dinner. So I did spaghetti. My daughter who's home from college, right? Um, she said, what are we having for dinner? I said, spaghetti. She's like, uh. So, you know, it's just, it's no respect. Spaghetti is an awesome, quick alternative. Who doesn't like spaghetti? Now I had to put the uh, olives and mushrooms in a separate dish. I couldn't mix them with the sauce because uh, my daughter doesn't like it. So, 19 year old kids, I tell you, no freaking respect. Okay, I think I got that chin pretty, pretty darn close to correct. Uh, I should do like a, uh, you know, I was going to do a sketchbook or a book book, however you want to, you know, look at it of me just doing like classic Hollywood bust shots or headshots of, you know, like, like I said, Charlie Chaplin or Norman Monroe or Cary Grant, Bogart, you know, but then I thought, uh, who'd buy it? So, in usual low presty fashion, I talked myself out of it. This will really come to life when we get those eyes. If I can find the right size pen. I've got all these pens, and they're all 0 0.8 and 0 0.5, and I want a 0 0.3. Oh my gosh, okay, I gotta go over to my drafting table. But while I do that, I guess I'll, I'll show you some art. I will treat you to a uh, sneak peek of uh, what I've been working on. This is only an eight page story, so I don't know how much of this I can actually show you before I've actually shown you all of it, but uh, here we go. We'll take a quick break, and because this, this actually gave me an opportunity to show you something. Okay, so, this is for the sci-fi story that I'm working on that I wrote, penciled, and inked. Now, like an idiot, I wrote this, like all the outdoor scenes were in the rain. Well, actually I did it on purpose because I wanted to experiment a little bit. Okay, let's see, that's about as close as I can get on that. Okay, so what I did here well, I'll lift it up in there a little bit closer. 
This is all with pen. And I drew all the backgrounds in, but then freehand, I went over all of them uh, with the line work to create that rain effect. I didn't want to use a ruled line because I wanted it more organic looking, right? So I basically went over and freehanded all the lines I put in there were in perspective and the drawing was tight and all that kind of stuff. And then I went in with a pen, like the pens I've been using here on this Marilyn Monroe drawing, and did my rain stuff. And I did some white streaks over the top of it uh, to help with that as well. And then here's some more. Then we got a prostitute standing underneath an awning there keeping dry. But as you can see, this, this effect here was just me doing line work with a pen um, and leaving some open spaces, almost scribbling in a linear fashion though. And then I did streak some white out over the top of it. As you can see, I did that, that, that wall right there too to try and create more of a rain effect. It's this last panel that's the killer right there. So I basically drew all that out in perspective and you know do the drawings and stuff and I, it's supposed to be a dystopian sort of you know what i need to do i'm sorry i gotta adjust this get this auto focus i keep turning it off and it keeps coming back on okay so as you can see this was all ruled in perspective and then i went freehand over and inked all of it all the lines freehand and then of course did um, vertical lines freehand down through the whole thing to create the rain effect, right? And of course, for those of you interested, anytime a nighttime shot, you'll see it's your lights are coming <clears throat> not from the sky, but from the ground where the electric lights are, right? So you're going to get a low lighting effect coming up from this, and that's why it's from the street, and that's why it's going to be darker up here at the top of the building as opposed to down at the bottom where all the lights are, actually. Um, so anyway, that's kind of a dystopian Blade Runner kind of city block uh, that this guy's walking down as he goes towards this main uh, compound. Um, but anyway, that's all pen, and I'm making this entire thing, all the characters, everybody in pen, because I want it to be a little bit rougher and looser looking. So even though it's not really me, you know, drawing all over the place, It's still in many ways a controlled drawing, but um, just freehand to get kind of the um, that sort of look I want on it. But anyway, yeah, Kristen Grant says it reminds her of Blade Runner, and that's kind of the idea. So I have succeeded. Yeah, see, can't we all just get along? There it is. That's exactly right. It's a great quote. Um, ba -ba -ba, let's see. Kristen Grant, pasta is life. Well, so is giant salmon because Kristen was out, posted pictures on her Facebook of some pretty freaking huge salmon that her and her husband caught. It was very impressive. Um, let's see. I love spaghetti. Hold the olives of mine, though. My wife can use the leftovers and make baked spaghetti. So good. That is true. Leftover spaghetti. Baked spaghetti. That is good. Mm. Did I watch Frag and Booms? No, I was working. So many of these guys spend their life on the internet. I'm just like, I'm doing like two shows a week, the professionals and my, and my Sunday show, and then an occasional one like this. And I'm like, and see, I prep. I don't just like wing it. I mean, I'm winging it tonight, obviously. But for the most part, I, I prep for my shows, so I have a little bit, you know, more stuff going on than the average live stream. And um, so it takes me a lot of time. And it's like, my gosh, I cannot spend my entire life doing internet shows. I actually have to draw a little bit. Although I might actually make more money doing internet shows than I would drawing. I don't know. I'll get back to you on that. Um, but no, I didn't see Fragas today. And I know Mike Miller's got one coming up too. It's like so many people have shows now that it's like you can't even find a free night, you know, where you're not competing against like one of your friends. 
but I guess that's why we post them, right? So that you can um, watch them anytime. All right, well, let's see here. I'm really trying to nail these eyes, get these eyes right. I wonder how many of these women back then wore fake eyelashes. If they just like pounded the mascara on. It's hard to say. That's the thing I, whenever you do like um, likenesses, you're constantly critiquing them. You know, even like years after I've drawn them, I'll go look at one and go, oh, what was I thinking? You know, you see stuff like, oh my gosh, your nose is completely wrong. Um, unfortunately, I can't. Can't go back and revisit these in the sketchbook. They are what they are, but, uh, and I don't take scans of these or anything else. So then I don't have to, uh, tempt myself to go back and I've actually people that have bought sketches from me years ago and I noticed things that really bugged me about them I was like bring that back to me so I can fix it I've done that before too which is just absurd but I mean what can I say I'm an absurd kind of guy See, this is looking more like Scarlett Johansson to me. <laughs> now that I brought it up, I guess I shouldn't have said that. Okay. The luscious lips of Marilyn Monroe. I just watched, um, my daughter had never seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I just watched that the other night. And that was the movie. I remember I was in film school and that came out in 86. And we went to Westwood and stood in line to get into that movie because that was the movie, right, that everybody had to see. And um, those of you would be old enough to remember when it came out. Um, and we waited in line for over an hour to get in to see that movie. And I swore that night I would never wait in line to see a movie again. In fact, I may have swore that I would never wait in line for anything again. And um, I haven't to this day. I have not waited in line to go see a movie, I don't care what it is. Because I figure, what I realized was, you know what, it's the same movie if I see it, you know, two weeks after op opening, as it would be if I saw it opening night, so. Now you just have to be careful, you can stay off the internet and, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> I'm sitting there drawing off camera. I didn't even realize that I apologize.
Oh, I was first in line to see uh, Tim Burton's Batman. Um, but I don't know if that really constitutes, because we bought our tickets early for that, and so we just kind of went there to get good seats. But I guess that constitutes waiting in line, but... So I guess I lied. I did do it after Roger Rabbit, even after swearing I'd never do it again. I did go see Tim Burton's Batman, but you know what? I didn't think it was that great. So um, that really cured me of waiting in line to see a movie. You have to, oh, you have to be aware, of course, that you know, in our modern age, people are... Um, On the internet, they really uh, you know, can blow it for you, so you have to be careful, which makes it you know, tougher to see a movie two weeks after it comes out because someone's going to blow it for you. But I didn't even go see like Endgame. You know, I saw Endgame, I think, after the first week, and then we went and saw it on a weekday. So I wouldn't have to deal with the crowds, but all right. Now, well, how about that? Yeah, you know that's funny. I remember the um, park the car and walk up to my kids at school, so I don't have to wait. In the... uh, yeah, I do that too. I did that too. I hated it. Junior high was really bad. High school was kind of bad. Um, but that's what I did in high school is I'd park my car and then go get my daughter. And uh, yeah, and she still doesn't have her driver's license, by the way. All righty. So that's really pretty much it. I'm tempted to continue working on it <laughs> just because, you know, that's what I do as an artiste. I like, oh yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit here. Maybe I can go in and do a little bit of this. And But uh, I think that turned out pretty well. Which that does have kind of a Scarlett Johansson vibe to it too, doesn't it? Interesting. Maybe Scarlett Johansson is Marilyn. Anyway, Ken loves it, and he paid for it, so that's all. Um, that's all I need to do is make sure the guy that paid for it's happy with it. So we'll sign off. Oh boy, I got to pick out the old bat book and see what number this is. Pardon my arm. Sorry about that. Do, do, do. Who would have thought I'd get this much use out of this bat book that uh, DC gave me years ago? Um, no, Monroe, 258. Lucky number 258 for Maryland. So let me go ahead and refresh everybody's memory. Um, if you'd like one of these sketchbooks, and you'd like a sketch in it, or even if you just like the sketchbook without the sketch in it, you contact me. Just basically, you go to PayPal at Aaron at AaronLopresti.com. You pay me the money, show me the money, um, and then put in the little message box or the little you know information box there why you're sending me money, like sketchbook with Polaris on the inside front cover, whatever. And, um, and then I draw it. A lot of times on a live feed just like this, put it in a box and mail it to you. It's that simple. Um, Super Jerry wants to know, when will you, when will you have a crowdfunded going for a book? Um, I will have information on that um, very shortly. Within a week, I will have information on that. How's that? So you want to uh, keep tuning into my... Uh, social media on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, 
And of course, I'll be talking all about all that kind of stuff on my uh, uh, live feeds, which I do every Sunday at 530, and then occasionally just to drop in like this. So uh, this is what we call short and sweet. And um, that's all I had for you tonight was to do this sketch. It's done. And so there I feel I've fulfilled my obligation. So I have to go back and work on that sci-fi story. Because I still have, it's eight pages. I'm like four pages. I've got four pages of ink. So that means I still have four pages to continue to ink. So um, inking is a pain in the butt. You know that? Because it's like drawing over stuff you've already drawn. It's like I have to do it twice now. Um, <clears throat> but um, occasionally you just got to do it. You got to suck it up and you got to do it. So anyway, everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you. Actually, I had a pretty good turnout for a last second kind of. Um, a live feed and I, I do appreciate all you guys jumping in and uh, giving me someone to talk to while I work. Um, but as Bugs Bunny is wont to say, that's all we got for you tonight. So that's all folks. Be sure to join the um, professionals Thursday. That's tomorrow night at uh, five o'clock Eastern time. Uh, no, eight o'clock Eastern time, five o'clock Pacific time. Graham uh, Nolan is hosting. Billy Tucci, once again, is fulfilling his Indiegogo orders. So he doesn't have, um, he, he can't do it. So Graham is going to step in and host that. Uh, so I'll be on that tomorrow night. And then again, I'll be back Sunday at uh, 5.30 Pacific time for Aaron Live. And I, I think, I think it may be Pie Fest. Uh, so be prepared to consume pie with me. I'm trying to get David Williams back on the show because I, I promised I mean, I brought up Pie Fest when David was a guest on the show a couple weeks ago, so I wanted to bring him back to give him a chance to eat pie and draw. So uh, that um, we'll see. We'll see if that materializes. But I will have something going on uh, Sunday at 5.30 for you guys to check out in our live. So I hope you'll join me then. And other than that, I will say good night. <laughs>